Hello Sadders fans and welcome back to the Warsaw Rewind. Today as you can see we're joined by head coach Matt Sadler. Matt, thanks for joining us for this one. We're going to look back at everything for the 23-24 campaign but before we get into that, have you had a chance to have a break yourself during this off period? Uh, no, we have three young kids so we went away for a week last week and um, I need a holiday from that. Uh, so uh, no, we, we went away as a family which was lovely but... Um, it's certainly not a break. It's yeah, it's twenty four hour childcare, which was nice. Uh, but uh, now all good. Been obviously, it feels like forever since the last game now, doesn't it? Um, and then as soon as I always felt it as a player, as soon as you get to June, um, you start really kind of counting down the the days before you're in. So very much so in that uh, mode now, um, and uh, looking forward to uh, to getting back in front of the lads again. It's good to have that family time, though, isn't it? During this period of the so-called off-season though isn't it to, because it's so full throttle during the season that perhaps family can sometimes seem like it's going to take a back seat yeah listen most of the days I'm uh, doing the school run walking them to school all of that sort of stuff so that's amazing because I don't do it for the other 10 months of the year um, so it's really really nice to be able to do that they see me as a bit of a, a constant for this period of time rather than kind of um, a guest for any other times that I do um, but again, that's that's um, that's what's nice about this period. Um, I'm sure they're sick of me now anyway, so I think they're ready for me to go back to work. Let's talk about work and let's get back into this season review and let's go all the way back to August, the first home game of the season against Stockport. At that point, you get your first official win under the title officially as, as head coach and we've spoken a lot about the home form over the season and Paul will come on to that after this one, but... How nice was it to get that first official win as head coach against the eventual winners of the division in Stockport? Yeah, um, well, we, having looked at the first four or five games at the start of it, I think we'd had Blackburn before that and Morecambe had just been relegated as the first game. You're looking at those first clutch of games thinking it's going to be a really tough start, uh, naturally. And, um, you know, I thought the first game at Morecambe probably deserved to go and win it. Large spells of the game we were on top. Um, and then the, the second topsy turvy won the Blackburn game where um, fantastic advert for the cup but you know didn't, didn't uh, go our way and, and you're looking thinking right that's two defeats in the first two games so we wanted to put a good marker down in front of the supporters which it ended up being a good marker in terms of, of our home form throughout the season um, and uh, yeah Stockport game had, had pretty much everything you see with them felt it from the off how competitive they were going to be in the season um, and, uh, and so it proved but uh, yeah fantastic win uh, started the season um, in front of the supporters exactly how we would have wanted to yeah that's it that, that victory set us on the way for what turned out to be a really good home record didn't it I think it's only five defeats in the league at home so firstly how pleased were you with the form at home and you know the, the calibre of teams that also we beat here you know the likes of Stockport Mansfield Crew. Uh, Wrexham as well so you know overall that's definitely something to build on for next season right, isn't it? yeah it certainly is I, when when Nigel Clough came here for, for Mansfield he, he commented it on it uh, after the game obviously after we've beaten them that listen you've beaten all the big guys, big teams in the division here which um, obviously it was apparent to us but I, I don't think we felt that um, that maybe other guys were, were teams were coming and turning up here and, and fearing getting beat um, in the same way that it felt like Nigel probably had been when when uh, when he said that to us, so yeah, listen, I know that this place can be an absolute fortress, um, and it really can, and it's important that that uh, that um, we continue that. But it's important at how much we enjoy playing at home. Um, I just think that the surroundings, how close it is to the pitch, it feels really tight when you're playing on the pitch because of how close the supporters are to you. Albeit that it isn't a tight pitch at all, but. Again, that's something that the opposition player managers and players comment on is that tightness that it feels. But I think it's because the supporters are so on top of you. Um, and again, you know, it was pleasing with that. We always felt like turning up at home. We wanted to to really put on um, the best our best foot forward and show the best versions of ourselves. Uh, and so it proved throughout the majority of the season with that. And um, you always enjoy going and sending home however many thousand supporters happy of, of big wins and and big evenings and I'm sure we'll come on to the Wrexham one at some point but the uh, the times that we had this season at home you know, really, really helped push us forward um, and we have to do that again. 
You've spoken about the supporters an awful lot. We have as well. We always touch on it wherever, you know, whatever game we've had. And you mentioned being so close in there. Does that create that different environment for a player, whether it's a home player or an opposition player, to go and play him when you know you can go to other grounds and supporters can be so far away? They can really play a part here, can't they? They do play a part here. Not can really. They 100% do. Um, I'm speaking to players in the off-season that haven't been part of this football club before and and the comment is always of, of what a fantastic stadium we have, um, what a, uh, you know a racket that the supporters make, and and that is always leaves a lasting impression on uh, opposition players, um, and so that and again that's something that we really really want to uh, you know harness, take forward, continue, um, and and build on. I think I think we've spoken about how attendances were up on the however many last years this season. We want to continue that upwards momentum that we have. Um, get more bums on seats, get more bo vocal people in the stadium, uh, and that has to be our goal. That has to be our target, uh, and start to really continue creating, you know, that momentum that we have here. That obviously comes with wins. Football is always like that, you know. Whether it's them, the lads performing out there on the pitch, things seem to go much better off the pitch as well. Whether that's people in the restaurant, people in the bars, or whatever, but. How pleasing was it then, Paul's really touching, just the five losses at home in the league, that the home form really did improve this year under yourself, uh, Gary, um, Dan and, and Darren Byfield as well? Uh, you mentioned wins and of course that is an integral part of, of gaining that momentum, but I think as well what we want to do and we're continuing to do is give a team that the supporters are proud of, a team that the supporters can um, kind of associate themselves to, local lads, some of them lads that young aspiring to to work hard and improve their careers and give absolutely everything for the football club and sometimes when you fall the other side of a result supporters can see that um and be, they make no bones about it you can you can lose any games at any time of course you can but showing that effort that endeavor that passion to get better and improve and do well for the football clubs that carries you through as well at times and provides that atmosphere um and i think it's important to mention that Again, the key now is for, for those guys, the ones that supporters have really become um, accustomed to and associate themselves with, the Jammers, the Liams, uh, Captain Donovans, all of these guys that have become real um, folk figureheads of the football club. We want to showcase them again next season. There's a, a particular game that sticks in my mind with the supporters in particular. I think it was Accrington at home here. Well, I think we fell a goal behind and then they really rallied and then I think we had the meet the manager event later that week and there was another sort of same again please and then they did exactly that and then we went and beat Doncaster so they've really dragged us through some really tough moments haven't they and um, you know there have been tough moments in the season haven't they you know those period with injuries um, you know falling on the wrong side of results so just for yourself as, as a manager in your first experience how tough was it to sort of navigate through those moments and when when you look back now, were you sort of proud with how the team really, and yourself and everyone involved with the club, sort of came out the other side and had a really strong second half to the season? Yeah, I think that second half was, was up there with, with some of the best form in the division for that second half spell and, and unfortunately we couldn't quite capitalise on some of the key moments in those final three home games. Um, and they, as we've just spoken about with you there, Tom, just fell the other side of a couple of results at that time, which can happen, uh, and a couple of decisions that can happen, that's football matches, but it was certainly um, it was certainly an incredible experience to see the, the, the shift in how we were. Um, we'd turn up for those final three Saturday games and it was there's really something on these games now. So again, you just roll back to the start of the season, that's exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to be competing at the right end of the season, come the end of the season. Unfortunately, we fell the other side of it at the end of it. But throughout that cycle of the season, there was, of course, ups and downs. And, and I'll continue to say that that will be exactly the same next season because that's how it works. That's what happens in in, in the Football League. You have these ups and downs throughout it. Um, we had injuries. We had twice in the season. We had five centre-halves that were out missing. Uh, and we had to readjust during that spell. Uh, and there was a hell of a lot of learning as a group to be uh, had during that time. A new head coach at the start of it. Um, and we braved that storm and we weathered that storm and, and I think it was clear for everyone to see that we, we really became what we want to progress and move forward in, in our style and the football club in, into next season. I think very much so what we set out at the start of it, 
he kind of got muddied throughout for all the injuries and then um, we were fortunate that those injuries kind of came together at the right time to allow us to get back to what we wanted to be from the very set outset uh, and we grew with that and we went forward with that uh, we believed in it and I think um, everyone at the football club maintained together through it um, but I think that's the biggest overriding thing for me I spoke about that togetherness at the start of pre-season the very first time I got the job uh, and that togetherness brought us and continued us through uh, that togetherness got us through some of them moments uh, that it's not just a word it's not just something that um, if you say it enough times you'll believe it that that togetherness was all about how much we we believed in each other how much we enjoyed being with each other how much we wanted to achieve for each other um, and that got us through some of those tough times and we'll need to do exactly the same again next season because that's how it works and that's what the football league's like um, but with the group that we've got we've managed to keep um, a vast majority of, of the squad together um, uh, that will be exactly how we approach next season I suppose you then obviously you have the frustrations of different things at different points in the season we've spoken about it as fans who you know work in the game as well there will always be games that have frustrations around them and Paul will touch on one of his games being crew earlier on in the season you know right at the start where go to and look play the best 60 some of the best football for 60 minutes and then they score with a fluke goal in the 95th as a head coach do you then look back at those kind of games with those frustrations or is it a point that you can't really look back at, at those ones and think what could have been I certainly don't look back and think what could have been. Um, I'm not that way inclined in the way I go about things. I just think about what we do next. I generally, that is how I approach life. Uh, what do we do next to improve? What do we do next um, uh, to make things better? Uh, those sorts of games, I think that that is definitely one because we, you know, eventual playoff final uh, runners runners up. I think we we played really really well against twice and, and obviously yeah, secured four points against twice. Uh, sorry, throughout the season, in the season, um, I think the the ones, the closest ones for me that I probably have reflected back a lot and thought about the game was would be the Bradford game because I think for forty five minutes and for large spells in that first forty five minutes we played some of the best football we've seen here for for quite some time. Um, so that would be one where I'd say and look back on uh, and think, well, listen, we played really well there uh, and we're right on the right train and the right path to where we want to go to if we're going to continue to perform like that um, but what can we improve on what can we get better on uh, and uh, and how can we uh, fall the right side of some of those results this season this coming season and I think there was a lot of times where we did get the result we deserved so we had some really good runs in December and then we had a good winning run in February as well so again that momentum really built and the uh, were those points where you really started to, to really believe and feel like, right, the team has really arrived now and this, this is what we are, this is our identity? Yeah, uh, certainly, like I say, I think there was a point in, in December when the players were back that we wanted to play. Uh, we'd missed Priestley for a long time during that initial first spell. We'd had injuries to, to Harry, uh, to David was out for a while. We, we, I think, it, as I say, it was five centre halves that were in a, were a, weren't available for a, a long spell in that first portion of the season. So obviously, we just shifted and changed shape at times um, to kind of accommodate that situation. At that point, and I think it's probably the Notts County game when it was one of the first times that we'd got that full group together uh, for a long time, and um, and then we built and grew from there and showed what the reasons why how we'd set it up in the first place at the start of the season that was starting to come to fruition um, and we get some really consistent performances out of it so uh, yeah there was there was those moments throughout it we went on some really good runs throughout the season I think um, I think the key thing for me is that consistent message of through the good runs and through the not so good runs we keep believing keep trying to do the right things for us uh, and results will come from that um, and that's, that's, in my opinion, how you, why and how you just have to keep approaching it. I will never be up and down and, um, and, and trying to reflect a different side to me to the team because I think then the team can just reflect an up and down nature. Um, we, we, and that's how I'll go about it. I think quite quickly this season we've, we've managed to turn uh, not so bad good runs into, into turning into good runs again. Um, and we, again, we have to do that with that consistency. 
Uh, but going into the second season of me, um, we certainly know what how we want it to look, um, what we want to play like, what we all expect of each other, uh, the togetherness being the, the thing that underpins us, all of us, um, and, uh, and that's what we move forward with. I know you've mentioned it a lot of times, Paul, to myself, but in that that second run of three wins over the, the Christmas period, I think it was the crew, Wrexham, and then into Grimsby, Jack Earing played a huge part in that, and it was so fantastic to see him come back and then obviously score against Wrexham in a fantastic atmosphere here, score against Grimsby in that historic 6-1 win away from home. And I think seeing him come back in, just the overall group feel to have him back mm -hmm. was fantastic for everybody to see throughout the club because of what he'd been through. Yeah, we had, I was on the training pitch when it happened to Jack and um, it, was a, it was one of them horrible ones where, you know, you, you, yeah, you don't really want to go back on that moment and the things that you hear during that moment, but it wasn't nice. And then everyone who was there then, um, and for the lad that, that Jack is, couldn't wish for, for anything but the good things for him. Um, fast forward the nine months after or ten months after and the hard work that he had put in alongside uh, the staff, uh, the medical staff here, he deserved every single bit of those moments that he had um, because it wasn't just fluke that he was able to come in and, and hit the ground running in the way that he did. It was through sheer hard work. Uh, and when things like that and you see people like that um, change their bodies in the way that Jack did, you only want the best for them and you only want success for them. So for him to have that kind of reintroduction to the team, having been out for so long, um, listen, we're all so, so proud of him and, and the goal at uh, Wrexham to start all of that off was an incredible moment for him and um, again I'm looking forward to seeing I'm really looking forward to seeing Jack this season uh, I really am I think he's a fantastic midfield player um, and I really look forward to seeing him kick on yeah it would have been I think it would have been great to have him involved because he missed the last few games of the season as well didn't he with the, I think the Jack injury. was a big big miss at the back end of last season a real real miss um, again he's fairly unique in the division the way he can drive past players, his eye for goal, um, the defensive work that he puts in, the work rate that he has, the strength that he has. He's pretty much got it all, in my opinion. Um, and uh, he's one I'm really looking forward to, as I say. He's had a few full starts, I think it's fair to say, uh, at the football club so far. He's, he's played a little deeper uh, in earlier on in, in his career here, and he can do that because he's a good football player. I want to see him further up the pitch and I want to see him drubbing goalkeepers uh, next season. Just to add on the sort of injuries, a lot of times during the season we actually found a lot of solutions, didn't we, with, with some of the injuries. So when we stumbled on, I think, when we had the defensive sort of injury crisis heading into that five-game winning run in February, March, obviously Manny was excellent, Dave was phenomenal, um, Taylor Allen slotted it in seamlessly in that left centre-back role. So you found them solutions, but then how tough is it for you when all the other players come back and then you've, you've almost got that embarrassment of riches. How, how tough is that for you to sort of, you know, you've got that tough decision, I guess. You don't want to upset someone that's doing well, but at the same time, these players are chomping at the bit to, to get their opportunity as well. So how tough was that? It's a great thing to have. That's why managers talk about having, you want those selection problems. I think um, the the one point that it was a problem for me was, um, was when David got sent off at Forest Green. And then it left us, I felt like it left us wide open then in terms of what we wanted to do. And I had to make a decision that I'd never, um, for, for uh, Rollins' career, that I didn't want to make. Uh, and I could have made it sooner when we'd had the initial bout of injuries. But um, I think I went on record at the time and saying that it's not something that I wanted to do to bring him back at that point because I thought for his career, uh, playing a, a load of games was uh, exactly what he needed to take him into the next part of his career. Um, but fair play to him, he answered the call and, and then when he scored his goal against Barrow, um, you're thinking, wow, this is what a, you know, what a story for him. And it, again, just goes to show the, what we've put together here, the group of guys that, that they are, uh, how everybody, regardless of the situation they're, that they're in, wants to come and contribute, wants to go and play their part, wants to wear the shirt with pride. Uh, and I don't think we should underestimate that. That isn't always the case, and it's certainly not always been the case in, in the dressing rooms that I've played in in my career. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, that's one uh, instance that I wanted to highlight and play testament to Rollin and hope that he gets teed up for his next part of his career and I'll certainly speak highly of him to any manager that come my way and speak about him. But, um, listen, I, I, the, the, the Taylor Allen situation, love it. I, 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 me and Taylor had spoken at length uh, continuously throughout the season about my thought process with, with where I think he can play and the different positions he can play. So it was no surprises to me when he, he kind of took that shirt on and, and really drove and, and flew with it. Um, so that was brilliant for him to see. I thought we saw a real different day from when he played in the middle. Um, and uh, he showed again that versatility of being able to play the side of it. And then, um, I swear, as, you, as you've said, when you've got the likes of Priestley, Donovan, Oshin, and he plays in the back line, Harry as well, waiting in the wings, it's, uh, it's great to, to have these guys ready and available again. Um, and as you've said, there was two very, very good runs in amongst all of that. One run was with one back three, another one was in a, a different back three. And, uh, and, and that was uh, fantastic to have those, those guys' roles. For me, it was all about what the, the squad wanted and, and the uh, togetherness that they showed to make sure whatever happened, it wasn't going to derail where we were at in the season. You mentioned the recall for Rollin there. There was also, let's go into January then, a recall from taking away from our squad in regards to Freddie. And I think it became apparent that we may lose Fred, you know, probably around the Christmas period if Lincoln were looking at that, that injury worries themselves. And in the past when, as a club, we've lost people in January, whether that's through selling them or through recalls as well, we perhaps have been left a little bit out in the cold in regards to trying to stumble around to find a replacement. But it seemed like we had a really good plan in place in regards to bringing Josh Gordon in and, and Mo Falter, almost counterbalance the fact of losing Freddie. Was that the case in the fact that we knew what was perhaps coming so we had that plan ready? Yeah, we didn't know what was coming until later. Um, we've got a brilliant relationship with Lincoln and I don't think it was ever Lincoln's um, intention to bring Freddie back. Um, unfortunately for them, they had injuries and they had to do it. Um, unfortunately for them and unfortunately for us in the end as it was with losing Fred. Uh, but again, as I say, the relationship was still very, very strong and they didn't do that without any real thought behind it. Uh, but because of that, we knew and how well Freddie had done, we knew that we had to have plans in place and conversations ongoing with players that to, to make sure we try and address the balance when, when that possibly did happen. Um, I think as well, though, amongst all of that, I was fully aware that when that did, uh, when we did make those changes, that there's always a period of... of Set, resettling in again and I think it came at a bit of a, uh, a tough time for us because we had the the FA Cup game which kind of halted the momentum of just beating Grimsby then we had a game uh, and the guys weren't in the building at that point then um, I don't. I think Josh came on again Stockport didn't he um, but Mo wasn't with us then and we had that and sorry Jamila just missed out so that then led us into the Stockport away game where probably we weren't quite at full, full tilt for that game and it just had that period of halting the momentum of where we were headed. Um, and then, you know, it was really good and, and uh, really positive to see, again, how quickly those relationships reformed, got to know each other's games again. And I think Josh and, uh, and Mo really took us on into the second half of the season. Um, Mo goes back to West Brom with our best wishes. I think he uh, showed on numerous occasions the talent that he is and the talent that he possesses as a 20 year old kid uh, scoring, I think he scored 14 or 15 goals overall in League 2 last season which is a great return for him and he goes back there with our best wishes and then I think Josh didn't quite get the, the goal return that he would have wanted but the work and the sheer effort that he put in for the for the group and the club um, I thought that was there for everybody to see and I think he had a real um, he made a real impact in terms of how the work that we put in at that front end in the second half of the season I think he really impacted things in that way. So, uh, yeah, two good signings, but it was two that we, we had to plan for and we knew kind of in November time that that, that may, may happen. So we had to be on our toes to make things happen as quickly as we could to to not lose too many games without, you know, re replacing Fred and the impact that he had had. You speak about good relationships with loan clubs there. How important is it as a club that's then looking after a player to keep those levels of communication good to invite people down to the training ground to watch them in training to watch them in the environment I know people come down here and obviously 
watch them for for their own benefit to that. But how important is it then to keep that relationship good to know that as a parent club, their players then going to be looked after by ourselves? I think that's everything. <clears throat> In the same way that ourselves and Russell kept really close contacts of Ronan throughout his loan, um, really close contacts, it's exactly the same that you would want for the clubs that we're having players of. But that is, you have to be really long-sighted with things like that because, again, this season, if we hadn't have done it that way, uh, and the benefit of both Mo and Freddie's loan is that you know we're a fantastic destination for young strikers to want to come to uh, and young players to want to come to in that way um, because they know that they'll be looked after, they'll be played, they'll be um, the work that both Gary and Darren do uh, with, with the, well all of our players, but in particular Darren with our strikers. Uh, it's a real coup for, for young strikers, especially to want to come in. Uh, and uh, I think the, the evidence that we've shown is that if you come to the football club, every chance you'll leave in a better place uh, than when you started, which is exactly what um, you know these guys from the loan clubs want, want to happen. So we're a destination for players when they know they're going to play games, they know they're going to be treated well. It's a really professional environment that I set. Um, and it will be, uh, and it is, and continues to be uh, a fantastic arena to play in, uh, which again is exactly what these guys want their loan players to 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 experience. So, uh, massively important. Have to continue it. Just listening to you this whole time we've been on the show, there's been so much to digest this season, hasn't, hasn't there? There's like so many situations, a lot unprecedented. But you know, there's even bits we haven't talked about, like throwing all the postponements, um, adapting to Chris Hussey retiring as well. So <laughs> there's obviously so much for you to digest throughout this season. Have you, have you learned a lot? Um, do you think the players will have learned a lot as well? Is there a lot of lessons from this season that will mean will stand us in much better stead even for next season as well? I don't think you can fail to learn, w- without doubt, um, from the experiences that we've had. I think it's very, very difficult to kind of um, preempt any of those experiences. Like you say, the Huss one was completely left field. Uh, we didn't have any inclination that that's what he was thinking at the time and obviously wouldn't have recruited him if we did. Um, but I'm very much so a, a big believer in that, um, that uh, no problem. Once that decision's made, we move forward uh, again. And I think the group, um, I like to think the group feel exactly the same way about that. I think it to me it all comes down back down to that togetherness of everything uh, and that belief of, of in, within one another. Um, we've got some fantastic people that work for this football club in every aspect of it. The media team's a bit shoddy. We need to replace <laughs> them. Um, but once we get to the bottom of the media team, we'll be in really, really good place. <laughs> um, but we do. We have fantastic people here. We really do from every single person of us. Um, and uh, what I... I'm proud to have started the wheels in motion of bringing that together. I'm not saying that's done yet, it never is a done thing, but um, I know that we have people now, every part of the football club, that are desperate for the football club to do well. Um, and there's a real togetherness from top to bottom with that. And that can only stand good stead with supporters, bringing everything together, galvanising things that when tough moments happen out there, which they always do in every single game, there's that little bit of a different edge to the way that we maybe um, affect those tough moments and and little things go such a, such a long way. So the way that uh, we've dealt with certain things along that tra- uh, journey, I'm sure will again go and stand, in, uh, stand us in different ways in a positive footing for whatever comes next. Because again, as I say, I'm a big believer in life that it's all about whatever happens next uh, and dealing with whatever happens next and what comes next. And, and that's all that you can do at that point. You mentioned that from top to bottom. I think, you know, owners of, of Ben Boycott with Travella and then Lee Pomlet, you know, you can see that filter down from those guys all the way down to the cleaners and everything like that. There is such a good togetherness at this at this football club and I think, you know, the support that's been shown from everybody, that's from Ben and Lee into yourself then and then from yourself down to your staff, into the players, into people like us who, you know, Come with you, it you know, all the way across the country. Yeah, no, saying, can't get rid of it. And, <laughs> and we feel the same. <laughs> and then we get into the supporters and everything like that. But how good is it then for you to have that support from everybody, whether that's you know the owners travelling to away games like not County, Alfreton, uh, to here at the Poundland Bescot Stadium? Then how good is it for you to know that you've got 
that support system in place as well at the football club and away from it. Yeah, uh, for me, it's about the respect of of what everybody does, what everyone's department is, and if you if we genuinely give that respect of everyone's role uh, in amongst all of this, then it, I don't see how. Um, well, sorry, I believe that then that just brings that genuine feel-good positivity towards what happens out there. Um, so you guys, you, uh, listen, I joke with you, you do a fantastic job, both of you, and Sam waiting behind the camera as well. Uh, you do an unbelievable job with the, not only the content you put out, but the, the hours that you work, the tirelessness nature that you, you put into to everything that you do. Uh, and, and that's you guys, you're that one piece, and then... Obviously, you talk about Ben and, and Lee and Steph and, um, and Matt and the guys at Travella. They all work tirelessly to improve things all the time. And then you've got Liz in ticketing. Unbelievable support she gives us. I'll keep going through. Everyone has a fantastic role to play. I spoke about the grounds uh, team. Uh, I can't remember what game it was, but they managed to get one of the games on during that run, I think, which we won. Uh, there was some incredibly heavy rainfall during that period. And and the work that those guys put in to get that game on. Um, they don't do that just because, you know, oh, I might as well turn up and, and give a half arse job in my job today. They do it because they want to do it for the football club, because they're valued at the football club. And, and that's, um, for me, that's, what, uh, that's what's unique about our club in that every single person, which then carries out into the most important, being the supporters, um, feel like they're a part of it. And that's what, we have to continue and we have to make it better uh, and continue that, not take it for granted. Um, uh, and that's that's my role, that's my job to make sure that everyone feels like they're part of it. That's the majority of the previous season looked at now. Let's, at the back, at the very end of the season, you then have, have to have the tough conversations with those in the squad that are going to be here next year, those that are going to be released from it. We saw four players released how tough was it as a head coach to then have those conversations with the four that wouldn't be staying out of the club? Um, never easy conversations uh, because naturally it's people that have put a hell of a lot into their careers to um, to progress and to, to, to give themselves the best opportunity of playing. Um, I think about the likes of Joe Riley who... Um, at the start of the season was very much so part of things, played a, a fair amount of minutes during that first initial block of games and then injures himself whilst playing out there and uh, we go on in a slightly different path and, and he doesn't find his way back into the team. Um, but an incredible person who drove training on day in, day out, uh, gave a, an incredible account of himself and he did things so, so um, professionally that when you sit in front of Joe, he, they're difficult conversations, of course they are. Same with Owen, you know, he's an incredible person and to have that conversation with O uh, about, I didn't see that conversation being one I was going to be having six months earlier. Um, but th listen, that's the nature of it at times. The, the important thing for me is just trying to be respectful towards the, uh, as a head coach, as a, a boss, as a manager, you've got the, um, you've got the power of people's careers and that's in any walk of life that you're in charge of that and you have to respect that I think the moment you become frivolous with people's careers is the moment that it becomes a little bit uh, you could probably have different reactions and responses to to that so very much so I was aware of that um, and uh, I think they, they go back to the word that I continue to use is respect uh, and I respect them hugely for what they gave the football club spoke about Rolling Remy had a really good spell as well and was unfortunate through injury uh, and sometimes these things that's the the nature of it and then with other guys that we're trying to recruit and bring back uh, it's continuing that dialogue of of the respect that we have and the the way that we see them at the football club and um and some will go the right way and some won't because the beauty, the thing that i want here is the football club where other players want my pl uh, other clubs want my players uh, and that is sometimes the case, uh, and that will be, um, that will always be the case. We just have to set a place and an environment that people are still desperate to turn up to every day and desperate to improve and get better. And when we leave them after those conversations, they're better than when they first started and when we first spoke to them.
Obviously, Jamil committed his future for another year, but there's still obviously conversations going on uh, with Jackson, Joe and, and Tom about potentially staying with the club for next season and beyond. There are, yeah. We keep talking, as I say. That that's, they would fall into the category of, of course, other clubs who are looking at our play or our players that have been with us last season and, and we see how those conversations shake down. Um, we uh, yeah, we keep talking and we keep trying to probe and um, we hope that some of those lead land the right way. And obviously you'd have been preparing probably before the summer, identifying targets to, to recruit and improve the squad. So are, are things progressing well on that front as well? Yeah, working really hard, very, very hard. A lot of conversations, um, a lot of to and fro in as there always is during this time. I think I said probably my first sentence was um, when you hit June, people start thinking we're going back to work soon. And I think that is always the case with uh, the bulk of recruitment. Um, so there's lots of stuff going on there. There's lots of conversations with players that are at other clubs that will go in and do pre-season with them clubs and, um, and uh, be watched by their clubs before coming out, which happens all the time anyway. I think it was important that and it is important to state that we, we kept hold of and recruited um, and extended contracts of a hell of a lot of the ones that we wanted to, to be with us next season. So now it's about how can we improve, how can we make it better? Um, and that's just the hard work that's going on. I think that's important to, to remember that we have got a real good core group of players, I think it's 16 under contract going into the summer, including Evan, who's out at Drada at the moment, in that, who will come in during pre-season. That's something that perhaps as a club we've not had for a long time. It's important, that, isn't it? And it could be a real good you know, foundation block moving into the season to have a group of players that understand each other's games going into the next campaign. Yeah, you want to. Um, we want to hit the ground running. We really want to hit the ground running next season. We want to... Uh, I think for long spells of last season, we were on really good form from that second half of it, and we want to continue that. Um, and also, you've got a group of guys that love being with each other as well. Uh, and uh, it's been, a, as I said at the start, again, it's been a fair time off, so they'll be looking forward to getting amongst each other's hair again uh, in the coming weeks when it does. Um, I said throughout January, uh, I don't want to keep thinking about the players that we're looking to sign. I'm really encouraged by the people that we have, uh, and that's a similar thing in... The, the situation for next season um, but of course in amongst all of that we want to make it better we want to improve and we uh, there's there's five loan players that go back to their clubs um, we have to then recruit again on the back of that and uh, that's the hard work that's going on you mentioned about the lads getting back in amongst each other obviously then that leads us into pre-seasons five friendlies confirmed already including a trip out to Ireland to take on sister club Drada there how pleased are you with the plans that are in place already and to obviously to then be able to go away for a couple of days as well will only strengthen those bonds as well? Yeah, definitely. The the Drada Island trip, um, has that been, that's been announced yeah. for supporters to go. I mean, it's a fantastic experience for, I mean, we can all hop on a, a flight from Birmingham Airport for 40 quid and, and whatever it is the prices are now. And um, Although, if you do, be careful at Birmingham Airport. It's a nightmare at the minute. If anyone's going to fly from there, hopefully that'll be sorted out by the time we go out. Um, but um, get there a couple of hours earlier, get in the bars a little bit earlier. Uh, but the trip is an exciting one for us all to go on uh, as a football club, as many supporters as possible as we can get out there. Uh, and we will meet and greet as many of those guys as we can. Uh, it's a great, um, a great exposure for us for the link between the different clubs, between Drada and and Warsaw, and that link is a very, very strong one um, within the leagues, as we've seen with Douglas, and, and we may see with others in the future. I'm sure we will see with others in the future, obviously Douglas and, and Evan. Um, and the plans for this pre-season were a hell of a lot easier than last, where it was very much so kind of coining together some fixtures uh, by the time I'd, I'd got the job, um, which made it a bit tougher. So, yeah, looking forward to this one. Finish it with a trip to Solly or Moors against you know your very close friend in Andy. There, you that's going to be quite a good leveler to finish the, the pre season campaign off, isn't it? Against the side Oof. that were very, very close to coming up and joining us in, in this division. Yeah, Andy's one of my best mates. We went to school together since the age of um, five years old, we've known each other, so it's um, uh, yeah, it's a perfect one for us to finish off with each other as we did last season the incredible season that they had um, 
and I, I, yeah, I was. Uh, I'm not going to deny it. I was a solid on Wolves fan for ninety minutes or one hundred and twenty minutes at Wembley there when they were so so close to getting over the line and joining us in the football league. Um, so yeah, obviously after that game, best of the thoughts and wishes goes to the season that they have, um, and it's great seeing him doing so well. But it'd be a really tough game as as the the other ones on that we've got nailed down will be as well for different reasons. You know, we're we're doing it uh, to try and play different games at different moments and get those ninety minutes out into the lads and all of that, um, and then to see as many fans in Ireland as we can. Yeah, it'll certainly be a special occasion. We're all looking forward to it, so I'm sure all the Saddlers fans are as well. But, but speaking of sort of jetting off and flying away after you, Brandon Comley, Donovan Daniels, uh, Liv Gordon, they're all on international duty at the moment. Just a word on them as well. And are they ones you expect to see back reporting for pre season a little later than the rest of the group? Yeah, possibly. Um, I think they'd probably like to. Uh, they might like an extra week away, which they they deserve. I think uh, both of them, all three of them, were back on duty in their training camps from the fifteenth of May, so they've had very little time off themselves. Um, I'm not going to feel too sorry for for Donovan and Brandon, because I mean, I think they might be in Miami at the moment. And Gordon's uh, in Rio. And so. Gordon's <laughs> in Rio. There you go. So yeah, I'm not going to feel too sorry. But uh, they will need that maybe an extra week, a uh, pair of them. Although, you know, as I say, they, them guys, they want to be bats together with each other, so it wouldn't surprise me if they want to be knocking on that door on the first, uh, first day of pre-season back. That said, we have to look after them because they've had long spells out and certainly had less time off than, than the bulk of everybody else. Um, so we'll, we'll watch those games and look forward to seeing them doing well. And I think there's some really important games for their countries in, those, in that spell. Um, so yeah, I think again, I think it's incredible what they're doing, uh, and um, yeah, just watch it, get over, look forward to the call afterwards to say everyone's okay, and then uh, get them back into the country. Well, Matt, thank you very much for joining us on the final episode of the Warsaw Rewind for the 23-24 season. As we say, best of luck to the three guys out there who are on international duty. Uh, stay tuned to all of our social channels for anything that we've got important to bring to you. Trust me, we'll be the first ones to bring it to you, whether that's kit or players coming into the football club. Thank you for your support on the Warsaw Rewind this season. As ever, just let us know your thoughts on this episode down in the comment section. And as always, come on you Saddlers.